Space and Communications Group is one of the largest satellite manufacturers in the world. Located in El Segundo, California, the group occupies facilities covering more than a million and a half square feet. Facilities with the latest available in automated tools, instrumentation, manufacturing, and environmental control for the production of Hughes satellites. These satellites are dual spinning. Each consists of two major parts. A non-spinning or de-spun section made up of the antenna and the communications payload and the spinning section made up of the spacecraft structure, solar panels and subsystems that keep the satellite on station. These sections are manufactured in separate dedicated areas. Areas that provide the specialized equipment required to design and build a satellite. For example, computer design tools help tailor each antenna subsystem to meet customer needs. New satellite designs are also analyzed before actual production begins. Satellite designs emphasize the use of lightweight materials. This antenna reflector, which receives and transmits the signals, is made of a special fabric bonded onto a honeycombed base. Technicians check the curve of the reflector, ensuring transmitted signals will be properly directed to their receiving stations on Earth. The finished reflector, joined with its feed network, is placed in this inflated canvas dome. Antenna performance is verified by monitoring the signals this antenna receives from transmitters located in a neighboring building. Construction of the communications payload begins here. The group uses both computerized and conventional equipment to machine the many parts and housings needed. In the RF lab, the machine parts are converted into electronic sub-assemblies for the communications payload. Technicians carefully position and wire components into these housings, spending up to five months working on the more complex units. Even smaller sub-assemblies are also required for the communications payload. These miniature integrated circuits are built here in the microwave microelectronics lab. An alumina substrate forms the base of a micro-integrated module. To designate chip positions, patterns are etched onto the substrate surface. To connect the chips to the substrate, we use gold wire. It's about a quarter thickness of human hair. This lab produces more than 150 of these micro-integrated modules each week. The finished electronic units are delivered to the payload integration lab. With the installation of these units on the despun shelf, the communications payload begins taking shape. This is the HS376 despun compartment. It's partly completed and ready to be delivered to Higher Bay. The spun section is the framework of the satellite. Here, in structures manufacturing, these satellite structures, in various levels of completion, represent nearly all of the group's current programs. Satellite structures differ based on their design and on the weight of the payload. Materials such as beryllium and graphite are used for their strength and lightness. Structures Manufacturing also builds the specially designed cradle that ejects the wide-body satellite from the shuttle. In a neighboring area, the propulsion subsystem is added to the satellite structure. The propulsion subsystem, along with its sensors, keeps the satellite on station by correcting for any shifts caused by solar winds and other forces. The fuel tanks for a propulsion subsystem are made of titanium, a rare metal offering both strength and lightness. For example, these large tanks for a wide-body satellite weigh just a little over 30 pounds, 
but can withstand high internal pressure. The fuel lines are also made of titanium. These lines are welded together using a special tool that bonds the skin without leaving seams, thus eliminating the possibility of leakage. Depending on the size and complexity of the satellite, anywhere from 75 to 700 welds are required. The tanks and lines of the entire propulsion subsystem must be carefully cleaned and inspected to avoid later fuel contamination. Highly volatile solutions are used to flush out the parts, so cleaning is done in this special room. In the digital lab, technicians carefully fashion the complex electronic network that controls the propulsion subsystem and other satellite sensors. This network requires thousands of components, components assembled into compact, lightweight circuit boards. Specialized equipment is used to test these intricate boards. Both digital and RF electronics are powered by solar cells, which convert the sun's energy directly into electricity. These solar cells are manufactured by Spectralab, a Hughes Aircraft Company subsidiary. They are assembled into strings that you see here for a future assembly on the spacecraft itself. On an HS-376 satellite, there are approximately 11,000 cells in order to provide the power required. The cells are delivered in a single form and soldered together in a sequence, as you see here, to make a string. The machine that you see on my left provides the capability to solder the cells front to back and to maintain this electrically coherent circuit. The Space and Communications Group is the only satellite manufacturer to use this automated system. With it, some 500 cells are processed each day. This output will be increased to nearly 800 per day to provide the additional cells needed for the wide-body satellites now entering production. While automation is used in satellite manufacturing processes, like joining solar cells, technicians must handcraft the customized wire harness that connects the power source to the electronics. Each harness is unique to a specific satellite. This HS376 wire harness it takes nearly four months to build and is nearly 15 foot long. This is a wide body and it's nearly twice that length. And over here is where we check our wire harnesses with the automatic wire tester. It can find continuity errors and circuit problems within 10 seconds. Thermal blankets are also handcrafted. Kapton, a tough reflecting plastic, is carefully cut and stitched to fit each piece of hardware. These finished blankets keep the hardware within a specified temperature range. Satellite manufacturing also requires high levels of cleanliness, especially in the mechanisms lab. Temperature, humidity, and contamination levels are strictly monitored as technicians fabricate precision instruments such as the bearing and power transfer assembly. This bearing is a critical mechanism. It keeps the despawn section stationary and also serves as the electronic bridge between the two sections. Giving this close attention to cleanliness and taking extreme care during assembly demonstrates why the group has never had a bearing failure in orbit. The high bay is the group's largest test and assembly area. Here, the subsystems from all of the other areas are transformed into a final product, the completed satellite. We are in the system test and integration area of the high bay. Over here, we have a antenna system that has been integrated to a despun compartment. The next activity is to move it to this pressurized airlock. Antenna patterns are measured by monitoring an exchange of signals between the satellite antenna and a test antenna located outside. The communications payload is then placed in an anechoic chamber. Cones of carbon-loaded foam absorb the electromagnetic waves, 
minimizing radio frequency echoes and allowing careful analysis and measurement of the communication signal. The spun section is tested in parallel with the despun section. And after both are tested, they are mated for the first time. This is a critical operation that requires paying close attention to lining up the two sections. The entire assembly is then placed in the spin house to verify that the despun section remains stationary and the antenna subsystem tracks accurately. Adjacent to the high bay is the space simulation lab, one of the most extensive and best equipped facilities in the nation. Here, the satellite is tested against the rigorous environments it must withstand throughout its mission life. These environments include simulated launch conditions. Because a tremendous amount of vibration is generated during liftoff, great care is taken to guarantee the satellite will survive. The space simulation lab also has eight space environment chambers. One of the larger of these, over three stories high, is prepared for the final test of the now completed satellite. The satellite enters the chamber fully assembled and ready to be put through its paces. We simulate the high vacuum of outer space by first pumping the chamber down, then by cooling the walls of the chamber to minus 320 degrees. Once the test is underway, the satellite is put into motion, the antenna is deployed, the solar panels are deployed, and we begin to monitor every facet of the satellite's operation for a period of 10 days. From design to delivery, the group emphasizes product reliability. As new generations of satellites are developed, the group will continue to provide the specialized skills and facilities needed to ensure a reliable product. Even now, the group is looking eastward. This land, across from Cape Canaveral, is the proposed site for an East Coast manufacturing area and space simulation lab, where tomorrow's satellites can be conveniently assembled for launch. The Hughes Space and Communications Group is a leader in the satellite industry. With its people and its facilities, the group anticipates and accepts the challenge of shaping the future.